Good morning, beautiful people. I'm so glad to see you today. This is Angela Thomas with Inspire Your Mind, Balance Your Emotional Wealth. Please like, share, and subscribe if you find my information helpful. Uh, leave comments below. Make sure that you uh, let me know if there's anything in particular you would like, or you can always write for me for support. Uh, it's available on my website for personal coaching. But today, what I'd like to do is talk about love. In the English vocabulary, we have one word for love. It's an all-encompassing word. Uh, it shows vulnerability, trust, lust. It can be healthy. It can be unhealthy. It can be spiritual. It embodies a lot of different terms. So when somebody says, I love you, in English, we have taken that to mean the love for between lovers which love can actually encompass a bunch of variety of meanings it can be love between children it can be the love between parents for their child the love between friends and we only use one word so what i'd like to do is compare the english term love to the greek words for love the Greek have multiple words, about five to seven of them, to encompass more than just one type of love. Because just like you have experienced many types of love in your life, just saying love doesn't define it. And we actually have to put a lot of vocabulary terms into it. Whereas the Greeks, had a word for each type of love and then therefore it was self-explanatory. I'm going to start off with the Greek word eros, which was also the god of fertility. It was used to describe a sexual love, a lustful love, a passionate love. In some ways, it could be considered an unhealthy love because it was the only driving force within that love. But as we said, it also represented fertility. And since it represented fertility, uh, reproduction. The next type of love was philia love. That is deep, close friendships. In English, it would involve loyalty, sacrifice, brothers in arms, you know, considered a military type of thing where you fight together and therefore you have a filia love, a brotherly love. Uh, you have to be able to sharing trials and tribulations. This would be things that you would commonly see in between very close friends. Um, there was a sub love under uh, filia, brotherly love called storage. That's love between parents and children. In English, we tend to think of that love as unconditional or an expectation that we automatically receive love from our parents and we automatically give love to our parents, whether earned or otherwise, but that is just, it's a love that's all encompassing and giving. The next one is ludus in the Greek. It's a playful love. Uh, I think children playing amongst themselves in the playground, uh, they automatically love one another and it's just a playful love that they enjoy playing with one another and therefore you see the enjoyment on their faces. But it could also be between casual lovers. So ludus could be floral teasing. Uh, dancing on the dance floor, um, light banter that you might have at a bar, you know, you're hanging out with some friends and you go, oh, isn't that a cutie over there? And that's ludus. The next type is agape. It's a selfless love. It's extended between all people, family, strangers, the world at large. Uh, you can see that labeled on uh, Christian churches today, they'll say agape, you know, agape church. 
which is supposed to be an all-encompassing love, and it also extends to being able to give charity to one another. So agape was another one. Underneath that, underneath agape, there's something called metta, which you could translate into Buddhism, which is loving kindness. So metta being lovingly kind to others. The next one, which is number five, is pragma. It's a mature, realistic love found among long-standing lovers, long-standing friends. It's able to seek compromise and make compromises to understand the give and take that's required in a relationship. Uh, it has patience, it has tolerance. It doesn't expect one another to sacrifice, but to find common ground, to discuss things in a mature, kind, loving way. The next one, which I'll we'll call number six, is fallatia. Uh, fallatia. It's the love of oneself. That could be a challenging word because we have well-meaning friends, family members, co-workers, even bosses that we will self-reflect on and take that to allow love for oneself to be degraded and lead to an internal chaos. Underneath the sixth type of Greek love, there's actually two types. And I will um, also define these terms down below. The first one is a narcissistic type of love. It's a self-love and it's ultimately unhealthy form. Think the Greek story that it's named after, uh, his name was Narcissus, And he was so in love with his own reflection that he was turned into a flower because he could think of nobody else but himself and others and he had no regard for others this is the most unhealthy form of love self-love but ideally what you're looking for in this sixth type of love is the loving oneself put your hand on your heart and loving yourself that's ideal it's healthy it's able to be secure in oneself it can allows you to give freely to others while also maintaining your own kindness and love for others at the same time. Being willing to give, but not to the extent that it's damaging to oneself. In the Buddhist form of thought, this would be what's called self-compassion. The love that you, so let's think about this self-compassion part. If you love yourself, it's okay to say to somebody that I'm unable to do this because it would take away from the love that I have for myself, is self-compassion. Um, whereas if you were speaking to a close friend and they tell you something about themselves or share something private and trusting and they become vulnerable with you, you would not uh, berate them for those thoughts or feelings, you would actually give them kindness, compassion, and say, you know, let's love you for who you are. Self-compassion is love for oneself, and that when you look at yourself and you say, hey, there's something that I have done or something that I don't appreciate in myself, you recognize it, you offer yourself compassion, and then you decide to change that behavior within yourself. Aristotle said that this type of love was all friendly feelings for others that are an extension of one's feeling for oneself. So when I'm talking about love, I want you to be able to have all seven types of love in your life. Not just Eros, the romantic love, not just philia, the brotherly in arms love. Not just ludus, playful love. Although that can be a lot of fun. 
agape, which is selfless love for others, or metta in the Buddhist thought, pragma, which is mature and realistic love, and alatic love, which is the love for oneself. So remember, don't just love others, love yourself. And that's what we're doing here. I'm helping you learn to love yourself. And if you feel stuck or unsure how to go to the next level, coaching is available. In the description below, I will define these terms. And I hope that you will leave a comment and let me know what you thought of the video. Thank you. Like, share, subscribe. Have a great day.